The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we'll continue working on the slot loading Nintendo. In the previous episode, we took apart a Nintendo and started to make the mods necessary for the new loading system. Since then, I've spent some time trying to build the loading mechanism and realized that I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I started this project. There's a lot of time-consuming, frustrating troubleshooting, which we've condensed for your viewing and I got it! Now that you're up to date, let's take a look at what I came up with and see what else we need to do to get the Nintendo working again. But first, the news. So in a previous episode, I mentioned I was making some projects for AMD. This is an AMD Trinity APU computer inside of an old payphone. It's got a USB hacked uh, microphone for the handset. The keypad is actually wired into a numeric pad, so you can type in the numbers, including backspace and enter. And uh, you can even turn it on and off using the coin release, and here's your Wi-Fi antenna outside. So the idea here is it's kind of a postmodern Skype computer. Watch this, I'll turn it off. Go to sleep, computer. Pretty cool, huh? So here is the Nintendo cartridge loading system that I made between episodes. It has two continuous server rotations, and they're spring-loaded, so they can grip the cartridge well. What happens is, you take a cartridge, and you place it here, and there's an opto. Once the opto's tripped, the system's like, oh, there's a cartridge being inserted. It starts up the servos. The computer does it much better than I do. And then it goes forward until it hits the limit switches. And there's a limit switch on either side, so if it is misaligned, it can stop one wheel and keep the other wheel going to make sure it is aligned. And there's a top portion, too which keeps it all solid. So this is the main loading mechanism. I also worked on this for the cartridge. <laughs> Nintendo's cartridge pitch is not standard. Uh, typically, something that size would be 2.54 millimeters pitch. Pitch is the distance between center of contacts. Nintendo is 2.5, so regular perf board you can't use. So I actually 3D printed this um, plastic thing and you put the uh, Molex contacts onto it and then you solder it. It's not time consuming at all. And then it has a top portion here, which matches up to the screw holes and it pushes down on the contacts so they don't get bent backwards. And the advantage with 3D printing this is I can put the screw holes wherever I want to make the rest of the assembly based off that. Instead of having to like attach this old thing to something else, you know, there's no obvious way to do it. For this, I have control. I know the spacing between the holes and all of that. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna write the code to make this cycle and then I'm gonna wire two more of these. After messing around with the IR sensor, I finally got the load unload mechanism working. I actually used a 38 kilohertz IR sensor like what's on a uh, VCR or DVD player. So it can sense if the cartridge is in place. I have a microcontroller down there, which is faster than a Nintendo, but whatever. It's got its own uh, regulator, so the servos won't draw too much power away from the Nintendo. And we have two servos here. And as I mentioned, they're spring-loaded. 
and there's a bunch of sensors and whatnot. So basically how the cycle works is if you block this IR sensor, it says, oh, there's a cartridge. It starts moving these servo wheels. And then once both limit switches are hit, it will stop. Then it will change its state to state three, which means loaded. And then you can also eject it. This is the eject button for right now. And there'll be another state, which is it being clamped by the cartridge connector, but we haven't done that yet. So let's cycle through it. And to test it, I have old Nintendo cartridge, the newest Nintendo cartridge I have, unlicensed Color Dreams, and an unlicensed Tengen. So let's try them out. Oh, okay, I guess Duck Hunt loaded. Let's eject it. Yeah! <laughs> let's try this game. Pop this sucker in and see how it is. All right. Seems to work pretty good. Oh, I guess. I need my came out in a hurry. <laughs> This is fun. <laughs> Man impaled by Nintendo cartridge. Element 14 is your Dev Kit headquarters. Dev Kit HQ. Easier with a huge in stock selection of the industry's most popular Dev Kits. Dev Kit HQ. Easier with exclusive devices developed in collaboration with Element 14 and top suppliers. Dev Kit HQ. Easier with a complete solution ready to ship today. Dev Kit, software, design tools, operating systems, test equipment, and much, much more. Dev Kit HQ. Easier with 24 5 live online chat or or a direct call to our technical support team. Hello team, it's me, Dev Kit HQ. Easier with the Node online technical library and research tool to find all the information you need. Dev Kit HQ. Adopting the latest technologies just got easier with your Dev Kit HQ Element 14. I wired all four pin quadrants with pins and uh, glued them together. So I'm going to start assembling it. So we have our pin holder here, then we have our retaining clip, which goes on top, and they both have holes spaced at uh, six millimeters, so they will line up. And then these attach to our main retaining clip here, which also has holes to make sure it lines up. So I'm gonna put this together and then we'll see if it hooks up to the cartridge. All right, now I'm gonna test the connections. I sanded the solder mask off of this old game so I can actually test the connection. So we're gonna compress this lightly and make sure everything's connected on both sides. And we go one at a time like that. So if there's a short, we know it. So the short between those two, you hear it. That's why you kind of stair step. Okay, so those two, a little weak, so we will take a look. Yes, I do believe we can build a Cylon detector to uh, find the Cylons who may be uh, in the fleet. Yes, uh, I should work on it right away. All right, I'm still working to make the cartridge slot function correctly. I've got a new plan of attack. I've got some of the 3D printed parts from yesterday. I'm using wood to block them off to give them a little more rigidity, and I'm gonna put them into this frame and see how that works. But I'm not gonna stop until I get it to work. Arr. What I should have done on this piece was have openings for the screws but I didn't. <laughs> Sometimes it's just hard to anticipate 
things you need in your design until you actually make it. Which is why what I usually try to do is make one piece, uh, examine it, design the next piece. Uh, because if you sit there and just design something all day, that's all well and good and fun. But then you might start building it and realize, oh, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. So what I like to do when I'm here at my shop is um, design one part at a time, laser it or print it one at a time, and then just put it together in steps. Because that way, if you find a problem, you find it early on. Here's why you make your part symmetrical. So if you want to flip something to the other side, you can. Thanks, Symmetry. You're welcome. So the idea here is that the springs do all the work. The default state is the springs compressing the pins. So we only have to actuate it when we put the cartridge in or pull it out. So when the game's being played, the springs do all the work. Now we have to test it though. Well, I tested this and it didn't work. Then I rigged up this device, which did work. Ta-da! How did I do it? Find out next time. My rant today is about the state of consumer television. Every year we see new fancy models, the new thing is 4K, and every year sales continue to be weak. Here's my personal opinion. Everyone who wanted an HDTV already bought one years ago, and they last a long time, unlike a smartphone you buy every two years. Anyone who's not buying an HDTV now holds off because of price. But instead of bringing the price down, manufacturers try to justify the high cost by adding more features like Netflix or Facebook. You know, things you already have on your console, iPad, or cell phone. That's like trying to sell an expensive car by adding more cup holders. My rave today is about all the great modern ways to consume content. Netflix streaming has limitations, but it's still easily worth $8 a month. You can download new release movies in HD for your Xbox, PlayStation, or iPad. I haven't been to a video store in five years. I actually remember the last time I rented a movie from a store, it was I Am Legend on Blu-ray. And of course, internet TV slash YouTube brings an even wider variety of content right into the palm of your hands. Consumers will always choose convenience over quality. Just look at CD players versus MP3. So hardware companies should keep this in mind before spending millions developing 4K TVs we don't even have content for yet. Today's viewer question comes from a software analyst who asks, I've been inspired by your videos and would like to build an all-in-one PC from scratch. I would like some hints on building a case for it. Well, I'd suggest finding an existing enclosure that is close to what you'd like to build. Then you can modify that to fit your design. Customize it by adding decals and panels for your controls. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we'll design a case for a custom Nintendo and finish the build. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.